I got some Adidas, 97,000 is on, and I'm not afraid to eat, bitch, use them. Recording. My shiny ass skin. Yes, I am recording. Because what you doing outside at night? This is something that happened two months ago. Right. I live in a quiet neighborhood and often go on night walks. I've always been a night owl. Oh, there it is. There it is. I don't need to hear shit else. I don't want to hear shit else. Enough was said. What was said what it was already said. Nothing else, nothing more. What? Nothing less, nothing. Nothing more, nothing less. There we go. Yeah. But I'm going to let it continue though. The warmer climate that I live in makes it uncomfortable to go on walks in the heat, especially during that time of year. Other times, it's okay. It might seem a little bit strange to go walking late at night, but those are my reasons, and I've been doing it for a long time. Wow. So anyways, I usually just walk the neighborhood, and I'm out for maybe 30 minutes to an hour at most. Jesus Christ. There's a sidewalk that I walk on that goes down all the streets in my neighborhood. I usually also never see anybody else outside. Obviously because of how late it is. I didn't walk every single night, but probably three or four times a week. Jesus! One night, I went out walking at probably 10 p.m. Oh, okay. I walked to the end of my street where it intersects with another. Then I walked down that street. Both of them are residential and really quiet, especially at night. I walked down this street for a while and maybe 10 minutes later was coming to the end of it and then probably going to turn around and go back. That's when I heard what sounded like a car coming from behind me. I turned around and saw a car with no headlights on approaching. The car was driving extremely slow. I kept walking, not thinking all that much of it. I expected it to pass me by, but after a few seconds, it didn't. I looked back again, and the car was a little bit closer to me, but still behind me. The area on the sidewalk that I was walking was now not very well lit. The streetlights were less frequent here. And I was starting to get a bad feeling about this situation. Starting? About another minute went by, and I was still walking on the sidewalk. And the car hadn't passed me, but it was getting closer, very slowly. It must have been driving less than five miles per hour, because I was walking sort of fast, but not that fast. Soon, though, the car finally made it even with me. I hesitated to look over, but I did. The car was a four-door sedan, somewhat old-looking and dark gray in color. When I looked over, I also saw that there appeared to be only one person in the car, and it was a man driving. He looked over at me, and I saw that the guy was wearing a black ski mask. Now I was even more suspicious. I kept walking, and he maintained speed with me. After about 30 more seconds of that, I came to a stop. I decided to... Stopping was probably one of the worst things you could have ever done in this situation. That, or... Talking to the people. Because I'm thinking they, they probably, if you were to talk to them, they probably would have said, I'm lost. Can you help me out? Can you get in my car and show me, you know, around the way? But you stopping dead in your tracks, it's like. I was going to compare it to something, but I can't think of it. around and go back home. When I stopped, the car stopped as well. Oh, yeah? Then I started walking back, and I watched the car start to turn around. When it did, I knew that I needed to get away. I wouldn't be able to outrun the car either. It quickly got back up to even with me again, and it looked like the car was starting to pull over. I was walking in front of somebody's house, so I turned and walked right up their driveway to the front door. The car stopped and was parked out front. I knocked on the front door to whoever's house this was. I didn't even know who lived here, but I was hoping that they would answer. Even though it was a little bit late, luckily they did. A woman answered the door and asked what it was that I wanted. I turned around to show her the car that was following me and started to tell her what was going on. When I did, 
the car on the side of the street suddenly sped up, screeching its tires in the process. We talked about it briefly, and I felt better now that the car was- Clock! This we shit talking about, we talked about it briefly, what you talk about? What you talking about? First of all, because I got Adidas house insurance and, and Adidas house protection, you not gonna step foot on my property. But even if you got my defense, blah, 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 what? But even if you got past my defenses, I'm not coming to the door because I know it's off some pluck shit. Just saying. You not gonna bring no cluck shit to my, in my way. You not gonna do that. I, I refuse. I rebuke it. Rebuke. No I say that right? And I was talking to somebody else. I said that I should be able to make it home all right now and then left the woman's house. I got back onto the sidewalk and carefully looked around. I didn't see the car anywhere. I started walking back home as fast as I possibly could. I was also looking around the whole time. Because why are you even walking? Why are you walking? Why are you doing any form of walking? You need to be hauling ass. That's what you ought to be doing. to make sure that I didn't see the car anymore. Eventually, I was able to make it back to my street and soon was just a short ways from my house. When I was maybe 100 feet from my own driveway, I looked to the very end of the street and saw the car coming. Oh my God. It was really far away and driving slow. I started running as fast as I possibly could, cutting through my front yard to make it to the door faster. I made it there, unlocked the door as quickly as possible, and then went inside the house. Again. You going to your house is probably one of the worst things you could have done. Now they know you live. You ugly, stupid, dumb, clucked ass. I slammed the door shut behind me and then looked out the window. The car drove by at an extremely slow speed. It passed by my house, though, and drove away. It felt so much better to be safe inside. Does it? Does it? Really? Shut the hell up. I don't think whoever was driving the car watched me go inside, or at least knew that I lived there. What? At least I hope not. I haven't seen that car since. I also have stopped walking outside late at night after that experience. I'm not sure who that person was or what they wanted, but I'm glad that I got away from them. I promise you, I can almost guarantee you, not only do they know where you live, but they plotting and scheming on your ass, and you gonna be right back in here in this in, the, in this situation. Right. This story is something that happened a couple of years ago. I lived by myself in a smaller house. I have almost an acre yard though, so there's a little bit of space in the backyard. I also have a pet dog who's a beagle named Charlie. Charlie likes to go on walks around the neighborhood, and I also take him outside to go to the bathroom. There's a small area in the backyard that I kind of dedicated to him, and I take him out on a leash whenever he asks. On this night, it was getting late, and I was in the li- Whenever he asks? What's he talking about? Whenever he asks? Hey, Ashley. I got you the bathroom. Um, so stop whatever you're doing. And, uh... Come walk me, please. Now I don't need get your hand. I don't need no leash. I just need to use the bathroom. Don't, don't you get your hands off me, lady, Ashley. I don't need no leash. I just need to use the damn bathroom. Okay, Jesus, come on, open this damn door. I'm trying to put a leash on me. I should. When I saw Charlie go over by the door, when I noticed him, he looked at me and then scratched at the back door, signaling to me that he had to go to the bathroom. I would often That is kind of smart, though. That's how Peanut was. For anybody that doesn't know, I used to have a dog, Pomeranian, named Peanut. And he was very well trained. Um, but that'd be the best. Like, when they, when they get to that point of being trained, and they tell you when they got to use the bathroom, oh, man. I played at night before going to bed. So I went over and got on my shoes. He got very excited as I got his leash and put it on him. 
Then we exited out the back door and went into the backyard. My backyard had a few thick trees in it and some bushes and plants near the back of the house. Charlie and I walked to his area, which wasn't that far away at all. I would usually stand outside with him for maybe a couple of minutes at most. When we were out there, he suddenly started barking. I wanted to go over to the right where some bushes were. I assumed that there was maybe a squirrel there or something, and I tried to get Charlie to calm down. I looked over, but didn't see anything at all at first. A few seconds later, Charlie started barking again. I looked over once more, but this time saw that there was a man crouched down, hiding behind one of the bushes. I didn't think that the man saw me, but I now knew why Charlie was barking so much. I tried to remain calm and told Charlie to calm down again. Then I walked with him to the back door. He was tugging on the leash the entire time. We made it to the back door, which was only like 20 feet from where we had been. As I was opening it up, I started to hear movement behind us. Charlie tried running in that direction and was tugging on the leash. I put- That was Charlie. That was Charlie every night. Come on, here. Come on, come on. Come on, come on, Ashley. Come on, Ashley. Let me, let me just get a little taste of that. Let me get, let me get, let me get, let me get, let me get a little taste of that. Come on, Ashley. Ashley. All right. All right. All right. All right. <sighs> I don't know if y'all, I don't know if y'all got that. I, I, I took the leash off myself. I'm inside quickly and we went in. As I was doing that, I turned around and saw a man now standing about 15 feet away and walking closer. I quickly closed the door behind us and locked it. Charlie was jumping up against the door and barking. I took him and we moved away from the door. I heard the guy trying to open the door now, but it was locked. Then we both went away from the back door and into my bedroom. Charlie was finally able to calm down after a couple of minutes when he was away from things. Probably 10 minutes later, I decided to go back over and make sure that the man was gone. I left Charlie in my bedroom and walked over towards the kitchen where the back door was. When I got there, I saw the man again, but he wasn't at the back door. He was looking in the window next to it. I turned and ran back for the bedroom. This time, I got out my phone and called the police. I told them what was happening, and I locked myself and Charlie in the bedroom until they arrived. I was sure to stay away from my bedroom window in the meantime. Luckily, I had the window completely covered but I didn't have a cover at the time for the kitchen window where I had seen the guy. When the police got there, unfortunately, the man was gone by then. They looked around, searching all around my yard, front and back, but he had left. I didn't know who he was either and never got a good look at him at all. It was so dark and happened so fast. All I knew was that he was white, had dark hair, and was average build. I don't think the guy ever returned, though. To this day, I wonder what he had planned. My guess is he was going to try to break in and steal stuff, but I really don't know. My neighborhood was not known for having a lot of crime, so it was very unusual. I'm glad that Charlie started barking, though, or I may not have known. In the past, I've actually forgotten to lock the back door when I've come inside. I probably would have remembered anyways that night. What? Go back. Go back. I'm glad that Charlie started barking, though, or I may not have known. In the past, I've actually forgotten to lock the back door when I've come inside. That's what I thought you said, but I just want to make... Yeah, pinky out. Ew, it's dripping. What? Why are you dripping? Can you imagine? I did that and all the shit just... I would've been pissed. I would've been so pissed. Oh my God. Um, I just thought about something. What if, what if Charlie was barking at the, at the bad guy because your ass is a cluck ass and the bad, and, and, and the bad guy that was in the bushes was trying to get Charlie, away from you because you're a cluck ass. You don't be locking doors. That's what it was. Charlie wasn't trying to attack the guy. He was trying to get away from your cluck ass.
I probably would have remembered anyways that night, but when I saw the guy, I was sure to remember to lock it. It's been a few years now, but I still think of that crazy experience. It's been a few years now. It's been a few years, and I still forget to lock the doors. Jesus Christ. I've been living in my neighborhood for a little bit over two years now. Damn! Sorry. This is something that happened last year. I live by myself, and since I moved in, I've gotten to know a few of my neighbors. Uh oh. It's a standard neighborhood with many houses, and most of the neighbors are very friendly. I enjoy talking with them when I can. So one time, I got home from work in the late afternoon, and then went to the end of my driveway to get the mail. As I was doing that, I saw my neighbor Darian was outside. Darian? What? Out of here, Dar Darian? Darian. Go ahead and add him to the club, Nick. I need to make that list. Jesus. How how are y'all? <laughs> how are y'all with like with neighbors? Are you just like to yourself? Are you friendly? You know. I'm very much to myself. And I'm not that friendly. You know. I don't got time to be. You know. Becoming friends with people. Just for them to cluck me up in the end. He's a very friendly guy. And he waved to me. I wanted to talk to him. Because I hadn't in a while. So I started walking over. Okay. Darian lives across the street from me. And probably three doors down. We got to talking. And between the two of us. We're quite the talkers. Our conversation lasted for quite a bit longer than I thought it would. We probably ended up talking for almost an hour, to be honest. Jesus Christ. It was a good time, though, and we were standing a few feet into his yard the entire time. Now, a couple of cars had drove by when we were talking, but I didn't even really notice them. Mostly our street was quiet, but occasionally people would drive by here and there. The sun had also set in the time that we had been talking, and it was now dark out. Finally, we said goodbye to each other. And I headed back over to my house, and Darian headed inside. As I was walking to my house, I was almost at the end of my driveway, when I noticed that somebody was actually at my front door. This was sort of weird. It was a man who was just wearing like a sweatshirt and jeans. He didn't seem like any kind of a salesman. Plus, it was dark out. I thought about just walking up and asking him who he was, but for some reason, I just stood there. I wanted to see if the guy would walk away. The guy looked like maybe he had been knocking at my door. After maybe 30 seconds or so, he left my front step, but he didn't even turn around. He immediately went into my front yard and then around to the side of the house. What? He then disappeared behind it, oh, almost no. in my backyard. In fact, that's where it looked like he was going. Now, this was pretty suspicious to me. I walked up and then went inside my house through the front door. I had thought about going around to the back, but decided not to. Once I was inside, I went towards the back of the house to look up the windows that led to the backyard. When I did, I did not see the guy. Everything in the backyard seemed quiet and normal. I looked through multiple windows, in fact, and didn't see anything. I figured that the guy just left through someone else's backyard or something. What? It was a little weird, but it didn't look like he was still here. What? Then I went around to the living room and turned on the TV. I sat on the couch, but only like a minute later, I suddenly heard the sound of glass breaking. It was coming from the back of my house. I quickly got up and ran out of the room and upstairs to my bedroom. As I was doing this, I just barely heard somebody entering my house. I got into my bedroom and then locked the door behind me. I couldn't believe what was happening. Then, whoever was inside my house, who I was assuming was the guy I had seen at my front step, started walking closer. He made his way into the living room and was getting near the stairs. That's when I yelled as loud as I could that I had a weapon and I was not afraid to use it. I also yelled that I had already called the police. I'm gonna need y'all to stop yelling at the top of y'all lungs. I'm gonna need y'all to stop telling people or telling the intruder what you gonna do. And just do it! Just do it! Damn! If you don't call the police, call the police. You don't gotta let them know that. Call the damn police. You know? If you're going to shoot them, don't yell out. You got a gun, you're going to shoot them. Shoot them. I'm sorry. That makes me so mad. I'm calling the police. I got a gun. 
I got a bet. You know? I got some Adidas, 97,000s on, and I'm not afraid to eat, bitch, use them. I was just desperate to try to get this guy out of here. Then I actually did call the police. At first, I didn't think that I scared the guy off at all. While he didn't come upstairs, I did hear him downstairs for a while. But soon, things became silent. I stopped hearing him moving around at all. And not long after, I heard sirens. The police got there, and I was finally able to leave my bedroom. A search was done everywhere inside my house, but the man was gone. They also searched all outside, but he wasn't there either. He did mess up my house quite a bit, though, and stole several items. I was upset about that, but overall just happy to be okay. The man ended up being located not too long after that, and some of my items were recovered, but I still had to get my window replaced. This remains one of the scariest things to ever happen to me. Jesus. Yo, that one with the, with you walking outside? You see somebody driving five miles, like five miles per hour, like, come on now. You see somebody, it's late at night. You see somebody driving, you walking outside, they driving about five miles per hour, mile, five, 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 why can't I, I can't talk, five miles per hour or less without no headlights and, and, and you just not going to immediately start hauling ass. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, bet, bet, bet. All right, cool. So, the dog, I think with the second story, I would have, I would have been on your side until you said, because you lost me at the, sometimes I would, I would forget to lock my doors. Who forgets to lock their doors? I don't. Do you? I think, I think I would have either ran or called the police. When I would have turned around and noticed somebody at my front door. I think that's when I would have called the police. I'm not going to wait <laughs> until somebody's actually inside the house to call the police. Come on now. Stupid ass. Keep it cool. Keep it classy. And I love you. Stay happy. My family.